the trouble with this country is there are too many foreigners. I believe in free speech, but they can't say that. What does it say? I don't know, but I don't like it. Come on. Subversive, this one, eh? Subversive all over the place. Thirty dollars or thirty days. I haven't got thirty dollars. What do you think I am, a capitalist? Sixty days next. Justice! Your name? John Doe. Ah. Oh. You look as if you want to know better. And so do you. You didn't even listen to that man then. Do you call that justice? Hmm. Subversive, eh? Well, we'll teach you. Fifty dollars. What for? You're a red, aren't you? If believing in the brotherhood of man is being a red, then I'm a red. Is it a crime to be for the common man? No, it's a misdemeanor. <laughs> and you call yourself a judge. Any civilization that permits a man like you to judge his fellow men is doomed. You tell him, comrade. Come on. There's a whole new order that... Turn up of that. Fifty dollars. I won't pay it. All right, then. Fifty days. Next. This isn't a trial. It's an inquisition. Silence. What kind of you Take got... her away, officer. Take her away. And you call yourself a judge. You're nothing but a bloated bureaucrat. Your name? Cooper. Cooper what? Penny Cooper. Did you say Penny Cooper? I did. City News Bureau. Uh, um, uh, 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 Miss Cooper. Miss Cooper, if you please. I know. I'm subversive. Hello? Penny Cooper has just been arrested. Yeah, I know, I know, but this time it's for being a red. Uh, uh, Miss Cooper. Well, Miss, uh, Miss Cooper, I... Uh, Miss Cooper, I'm afraid I interrupted you when you were about to say something that would have changed the complexion of the case. I'll tell you what's changed. You know who I am. That's just what I was talking about. Justice based on social privilege must go. You're quite right, Miss Cooper. And now that you've fully explained yourself, it sheds an entirely different light on the whole matter. A sentence suspended. But I don't want it suspended. I want to serve my sentence. Well, well but that's impossible, Miss Cooper. We have a full house. I, I, I'm afraid we couldn't find a cell for you. Then what are you planning to do with these poor people? Oh, I was coming to that. I was going to dismiss them. Now, uh, get along, all of you. Get along, get along. All of you, go on. Go on now. capacity as a judge, you could do a great thing for humanity, Your Honor. Really? And what's that? You could order yourself electrocuted. <laughs> what are you doing here? I told you to go. He won't, Your Honor. Oh, subversive, eh? 30 days. I'm not a prisoner, Your Honor. I just came to collect the last installment on your car. Sixty days. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. Hey, Miss Cooper. Hey, Miss Cooper. Is the pig or subject to gag? Of course not. Yeah, I don't get it, Miss Cooper. Are you in love with the red? Miss Cooper, how do you reconcile the fact that you're the richest girl in the world with communism? Having money doesn't necessarily stop one from having ideals. I know, but it makes it a lot cozier. Yeah. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, 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 Comrade, madame, delighted to see you in one piece. Thank you, Grisha. 
You're all right, I hope. I have a few bruises here and there, but that doesn't matter. I was so worried about you, I tried to rescue you, but the fight swept me away. I myself knocked out three of the capitalistic pigs, and then everything went black. Congratulations, Miss Cooper. Thank you, Theodore. Were you there? I regret I couldn't make it. I was rioting over on 126th Street. Really? How did it go there? The usual thing. A uh, few heads were cracked, then everybody was thrown in jail. Everybody except me. I did my best to be put in jail, but the judge insisted on releasing me. The swine. How long do we have to stand for such treatment? By the way, there is a Mr. Fairchild waiting for you in the drawing room. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to have dinner with him. I don't think he'll care for any now. He has been eating hors d'oeuvres for three hours. Oh. Bruce, darling, I'm terribly sorry. Think nothing of it, darling. I've been picnicking here, talking to myself, and we've had a wonderful time. Darling, you really should let the chauffeur change tires. Well, it's good, honest dirt. I'm proud of it. You never get the most terrific news. Ladies first. Don't tell me you've won your case. Oh, hands down. But that's not the big news. Oh, I've got something that's really going to start you. Sit down here. At the stroke of 12 today, four men walked into my office. Fat, prosperous men. They patted me on the back, pumped my hand, stuck cigars in my face, and said, Bruce, you're the smartest young lawyer in the city of New York. Well, who was I to deny at four against one? And then they sold you some insurance. Oh, no. Then they told me about myself, and I listened. I have an open mind. Before I knew it, they were begging me to run for Congress. Well, we argued back and forth for a second or two, and then I started shoving cigars into their mouths and told them I'd accept. Congress? Oh, Bruce, I think it's wonderful. It's even more wonderful than I thought. We'll get behind you. You can carry our message right into Congress. Well, thanks, Penny. I'll be glad to have the debutante vote. You don't understand. I'm serious. This is the chance we've been waiting for. Someone to speak for the masses. A brave voice. Your voice, Bruce, tearing down the whole social structure. <laughs> if I didn't know you better, I'd think you were a communist. I am. What? Yes, and you'll be one, too, before I get through with you. Why, only last week you were talking about buying a new yacht. Oh, but I hadn't met Grisha then. Grisha? Who's he? The new butler. When Davis left without a warning, I called for a new man. And then Grisha came. Oh, Bruce, he's the most inspiring man I've ever met. Grisha? He's been to Russia and seen things working. Why, in 24 hours, he changed my entire outlook on life. It's out of nonsense. You can't mean it. I most certainly do. And I expect you to help us. You want me to jeopardize my entire career before it's even started just because you've got a new fad? A fad? Can't you tell when I'm serious? If you love me, Bruce, you'll help us. We need you. I need a drink. Oh, Bruce, listen to me. You can't close your eyes to this. No, but I can't help thinking how nice it'd be if I could. Are you going to the club or back to Florida? Oh, I think I'll drop in the club. I'm kind of tired riding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> Good night, Yeah, Lewis. So long, you. Good yeah. night, Mary. <laughs> But, Bruce, you'll go down in history. The masses will rise up and carry you into office on their shoulders. But I don't want to ride on the shoulders of the masses. Penny, can't you understand? I'm being back for the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, hello there, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I... Uh, oh, yes, 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 I had a wonderful time. No, it was just warm enough. Uh, the water was a little... Yeah, what's, what's the matter with you two? Well, no, but it's like this. You see, I'm running for Congress and... Well, cheer up. Maybe you'll be defeated. Oh, it isn't that. It's just that he has a chance to save civilization and he won't do it. Well, now, Bruce, I think you ought to. That isn't too much to ask of a man. Yeah, my goodness, Penny, what's happened to your face? You've been on a scavenger hunt or something? Penny's been liquidating a few capitalists. Milburn, I think you ought to know it. Your niece has been out preaching communism. You communism? My, my, ooh, that calls for a drink. This is something new, isn't it, Penny? It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me, Uncle. All you have to do is read this, and you'll be on our side. Yeah? What is the destination of communism? <laughs> is this our Book of the Month Club dividend, Penny? Oh, I might have known nobody would understand. Oh, now, wait a minute now. I understand perfectly, and I'm glad to see you taking an intellectual interest. It's a lot better than spending your time chasing around in cafe society. Well, you're both making a very I'm through with cafe society. This is real, vital. I'm on fire with it, Uncle. Well, I have only one request to make, that you have your own little private conflagration without telling anyone about it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, the less publicity about this thing, the better. After all, Penny, to the public, you know, you represent Cooper's soup. Don't talk to me about soup. Excuse me, comrade madame, but I knew you'd want to see the papers. You 
you've struck a great blow for our cause. Look at these headlines. Look, look. Tonight, the red flag is flying over Park Avenue. Penny Cooper, heiress to the Cooper Soup Fortune and Cafe Society's number one debutante, dramatically announced her conversion to communism by leading a red riot in Union Square. And because of Miss Cooper's un-American activities, I, as president of this organization, urge every one of you to register your protest. Boycott Cooper's suit. And if you want our patronage, you'll take every can of Cooper's soup off your shelves. Yes, ma'am. We won't handle it anymore. One look at the sales chart tells the story. It certainly does. We're practically out of business. What's the matter with the girl? Is she crazy? No, no, no. It's just a new enthusiasm. She'll get over it. But when? We've got to do something now. Joe's right. Well, gentlemen, you haven't given me an opportunity to mention this before. But last night, I attended one of Elsa Maxwell's parties. We're not interested in your social activities, Melvin. We're here for business. Precisely. Someday you'll realize, gentlemen, that I have our soup on my mind constantly. I have hit on an excellent way to win the public back to our product. Putting your niece in a straitjacket wouldn't be bad. Yeah, please, please. Never mind the build-up, Milburn. Let's have it. Well, last night, I persuaded Elsa Maxwell to give Cooper Soup a testimonial. It'll be the sensation of the industry. We'll plaster the country with advertising. Just a big picture of Elsa with the statement, at my parties, I always serve Cooper Soup. Don't you see, gentlemen, if we push Elsa hard enough, it'll counteract what Penny's doing to us. Before we give you a rising vote of thanks, can you tell us just how much this idea is going to cost? That's the remarkable part of it. Money means nothing to Elsa. So she agreed to do it for $25,000. 25000 Well, that's mighty white of her. I'll try anything. At least it's better than sitting here with our hands folded. Gentlemen, we'll get a million dollars worth of advertising out of it. Elsa's parties are famous all over the world. Yes? Miss Maxwell's outside to see Mr. Cooper. Ah, speaking of angels. Have her come in. Well, good morning, Elsa. Hello, Melvin. My, my, I'm glad to see you. In fact, I'm doubly glad to see you. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, this is Miss Maxwell. How do you do? Uh, gentlemen, please be seated. I'm sorry to break in like this, but I wanted to return this check to you. Uh, uh, why? I just tasted your soup for the first time. Why, well, so only the finest ingredients goes into our soup. Miss Maxwell, you can't mean that. No, as a matter of fact, I don't. It's just that I have no particular fondness for being lynched. At a time like this, I want no part of Cooper's soup. When you can't even buy a testimonial, you're licked. Sorry, gentlemen, but it wouldn't have done any good anyway. I know of no counter-irritant to communism in this country. The only thing I can think of that would do any good, Melbourne, is for you to take that little swimming pool Bolshevik out to the woodshed. Uh, uh, don't forget, Penny takes boxing lessons. <laughs> well, there are ten of you here. If you take it by surprise, you ought to be able to swing it. If you need any help, I have a friend who used to be a wrestler. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Miss Cooper, good evening. Oh, good evening, Miss Cooper. Good evening. Oh, welcome, Miss Cooper. Oh, good evening, Ivan. I'm delighted to see you so soon again. I hope Dimitri will be here tonight with his guitar. Oh, he's here now. <laughs> Your special booth. Thank you. Isn't this wonderful, Bruce? Isn't it a great atmosphere? Do you care to order, sir? Or may I suggest Zakuska, Borscht, Pips, Droganov? Or perhaps Shoslik with vinaigrette, vino, chai, and morozhna? You took the words right out of my mouth. Will you please send Dimitri over here? Right away, Miss Cooper. Who's Dimitri? Mm. Wait till you hear him. Good evening, Miss Cooper. Oh, good evening, Dimitri. Will you sing for us O Chichornia? With great pleasure. No!
черная, очень страстная, очень жгучая и прекрасная. Ох, люблю я вас, ох, боюсь я вас. Maybe you think working as waiter means you should wait here. After you've worked for me for a while, you will find out that when I say 7 o'clock, I mean 6.30. Oh, I was here on time, but I had a little trouble finding a smock that would go with my complexion. Get out there at once to booth number two. Miss Penny Cooper is waiting for her zakuska. Oh, yeah? What time was he supposed to be here? Home gunk strong enough. I knew I should have hired the real Russian waiter. Zakuska is not a human being. It's hors d'oeuvres on a wagon. Oh. Now get out there at once and serve it. Okay, okay. And it's not okay. For the man, it's da barin. And for the woman, it's da barin ya. Okay, I mean, uh, da barin. And another thing. Any spots on the smock on breakers of dishes will be subtracted from your salary. Yeah, I know. One teacup and I owe you money. Da barin. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's all right. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Love this place. The Russians have such enthusiasm. Dmitri has such soul in his singing. Yeah, well, I like Americans. This is called Zakuska. What a word. Oh, <laughs> Очень страстная, очень жгучая. That's more than enough, waiter. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I never get enough of these things myself. I'm sorry. Slippery little devil, isn't it? Oh, I am sorry. Well, naturally, that makes it all right. Never mind, Bruce. I, uh, I'll get you another olive. I, I mean, is there anything I can do? Well, hardly. <laughs> if it were a slot machine, you wouldn't be able to hit it one time in a million. <laughs> uh, maybe I'd better get the borch. Miss Cooper, everything is all right? How are the hors d'oeuvres? Very comfortable, thank you. Call Walter Winston, call all the papers. Tell them Miss Penny Cooper is here. And be sure and explain the address so they can't miss it. Went out to tune up his instrument. made it. Trotsky. Can't relax a minute, can you? Trotsky. Wonderful. Everything is satisfactory, Miss Cooper? This is exquisite. How do you ever make such magnificent borscht? You like it? Oh, yes. I'll show you. Isn't it delicious, Bruce? Not bad. Oh, come now. It's more than that. All right. Not bad at all. Here it is, Miss Cooper. It is a little secret I share only with you. 
Учи кушно вам побораться. Хоумей. I'm sorry, Penny. That's not that funny. Oh, where's your sense of humor? Can't you see that your theories are just as synthetic as that Borsch? I don't believe you realize the harm you're doing, Penny. Well, only this afternoon, Milburn told me that the whole nation is boycotting Cooper soup just because of you. So that's it. That's why you finally took me out. Milburn put you up to it. Sure he did. But I intended to talk to you anyway before going away on my campaign tour. Quit kidding yourself, Penny. Communism is just an impractical theory worked out by a lot of lazy people in the hopes of getting something for nothing. Of course, you think it's impractical because you're a have. But if you were a have not, it'd be a different story. I'll bet that waiter over there doesn't think it's so impractical. I don't care what he thinks. Well, what he thinks is what 130 million other people think. Waiter! All right, never mind. I'll take your word for it. That's typical of our class. For years, we've closed our ears and eyes and sat there smugly, refusing to listen to the masses. Well, it's time we did. Now, buddy, what can I do for you? I'd like you to answer a few questions. How much do you make a week? Eighteen dollars and, uh, tips. Wouldn't you like to be earning more? Sure. Do you know there are men in this town earning three and four million dollars a year? Aren't you envious of them? Sure I am. But if we had communism in this country, that couldn't happen. You couldn't be rich. Everyone would have the same amount. How would you like that? Oh, I wouldn't like that. You mean you're not in favor of communism? Oh, I should say not. Say, someday I expect to be making four million a year myself. There you are, the voice of the people. You're just too stupid to know what's good for you. Someday there'll be a Soviet here, whether you like it or not. Soviet? Now, now, lady. Don't you realize that America's the only country left where a fellow like me can start out at $18 a week and end up earning millions? Oh, I know the odds may be against it, but there's still that chance. I don't want anybody taking that chance away from me. That's the most practical definition of Americanism I've ever heard. That's what the capitalists have preached for years, to keep the common people satisfied. Why do you swallow it? Why don't you wake up? Why don't you wake up, Miss Cooper? Oh, I've read about your Bolshevik belly aches in the newspapers. If you'll pardon me for saying so, what I think you need more than anything else is a good spanking. <laughs> anything wrong, Miss Cooper? I want this man discharged. <laughs> oh, now, just a minute, Miss Cooper. You're a little mixed up, aren't you? Now you're using your capitalistic influence. Isn't that a little inconsistent with your communistic beliefs? Will you get him out of here? You're fired. Get to the kitchen. Now I am going to give you that spanking. Get to the kitchen! Take it easy, watch face. <laughs> I'm all for you, fella, but don't lay a hand on it. Thanks for the support, but look out of the way. I mean it. I hate to do this. Oh! Oh, don't you touch me! Let me go! Let me go! Don't you dare touch me! Oh, 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 oh. Bunch of flowers, Mr. Blake. More flowers. They try to put any more of those things in here, there won't be room for the cockroach. I'll take them. All right, Schlitz, here they come. Shame on you, Mr. Schlitz. You're taking away all Mr. Blake's flowers. Why don't you give the other prisoners a chance? Oh, I'm sorry. Even that hammer murderers didn't catch on with the public the way you have, Mr. Blake. Here's some wires for you, Mr. Blake. Just give them to my social secretary. <laughs> Listen to this one. It's from a reverend. Uh, uh, congratulations on spanking Penny Cooper. Stop. Uh, your hand struck a mighty blow against the forces which are undermining American youth. Hmm. Apparently, I covered more territory than I counted on. You know, Mr. Blake, life is very ironic. You're a national hero, and I'm just another prisoner. And yet we're both in here for the same offense. Is that so? Yes. I also spanked a woman. 
Only it was my wife. If more people knew my wife, I'd be a national hero too. <laughs> When I saw the headlines, I knew I'd be in for it. Oh, I just wish you were that waiter. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Miss Cooper, if I may say so. Don't forget, I got a glass jaw. Excuse me, Miss Cooper. What is it, Grisha? Your uncle would like you to come down to the library. All right, I'll be down in a few minutes. That'll be all, Eric. Thank you, Miss Cooper. Would you like to put them out for a round or two? It would give me great pleasure, but I have a glass jaw. You too? Da. Hello, Kenny Dolly. Hello, Elsa. Melvin. Hello. I see you've been reading my notices. I hope this isn't the start of one of your lecture tours. Well, I know it's none of my business. Thanks, but... Elsa. You're the first of my friends to realize that. We all having breakfast together? Uh, I've had my breakfast. I never eat any. Oh, then it's something else? I can see you're tired of the subject, Penny. But I did come over here to discuss you. Well, I talked it over with congressmen, reporters, judges, uncles, and waiters. It might be interesting to find out what they're saying about me at the stork club. Don't be cynical, please. Penny, I know your heart's in the right place. But one little girl like you can't solve all the world's problems. One little girl can try. This isn't a new idea you've come across. It's an old cure-all that never cures. If everyone believed that, there'd be no progress at all. I don't think you're progressing this way, Penny. You haven't changed the world a bit. But in one week, you've practically wrecked your uncle, your friends, and the Cooper Soup Company. I didn't expect to change the world in a week or to have people applaud me. And as far as the Cooper Soup Company is concerned, it can fall flat on its face and I won't care. But Penny, don't you realize it'll mean the loss of your personal income? That's all right with me. We've always had too much money. Yeah, but, but you don't know what you're saying. I, I wish you'd listen to Elsa. She has a plan to counteract all this bad publicity and, and whitewash you completely. But I don't want to be whitewashed. I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing. And if people insist on misunderstanding me, well, that's just too bad. Well, Penny, as long as you're running such a fever, there's nothing to do but wait for the delirium to pass. You've been criticizing my ideals, Elsa. Well, what about yours? Just what have you been doing for the world? I've given lots of good parties in my time, made lots of people happy. That's something your Russian friends wouldn't understand. Do you think that justifies your existence? Your way of life is doomed, Elsa. You belong to a social order that's as dead as the Incas. I once met an Inca boy at a dude ranch. There was nothing dead about him. Miss Cooper. Excuse me, please. Pardon, Miss Cooper, but I have an important message for you. What is it, Grisha? If you don't mind, it's a little sub rosa. I tell you, Elsa, reasoning with her is like hollering down a well. You get your own words thrown back in your teeth. What I've been trying to say, comrade madame, is that I have your best interests at heart. I'm sure you have, Grisha, but... What is it? I couldn't help but hear. It was inspiring when you said that money doesn't mean anything to you anymore. Thank you. The only thing is, it comes at an embarrassing moment for our leaflet campaign. What can I do, Grish? Come on, madame, I hardly know. But instinctively, I realize that your income is indispensable. I never thought about that. So far, almost single-handed, you've kept us out of the red. Ironically enough, our cause seems to somewhat depend upon the sale of Cooper's soup. I didn't realize that. You should have warned me. I know, but I so seldom think about money. Now it's too late. The damage is already done. Your uncle mentioned a plan. Sometimes it's better generalship to appear to cooperate. But I couldn't pretend to give up communism. I'd be living a lie the rest of my life. It wouldn't be for the rest of your life, comrade. In a few weeks you'll come of age and the company will be yours. Then there is nothing to prevent you from selling it, providing anyone would want to buy the company by then. But they've got to want to buy it. I'll do anything. Comrade, I salute you. Great causes demand great sacrifices. All of us can give our blood, but only you can give money. Come on, Sergeant, have a heart. Just give me two minutes with him, Sarge. Just one minute. I'll settle for a look at his hand. Look, boys, I've been telling you till I'm hoarse that you can't see him. Now, technically, he's just an ordinary prisoner. And if I had my way, he'd be a free man. 
If I had my way, he'd be president. I think you ought to get the Nobel Peace Prize. That Cooper dame had it coming to her. I quite agree with you. Hmm? Good morning, oh, everybody. Good morning, Miss Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Sergeant, I want Mr. Blake released. But really? yeah. I'm not going to press charges. What? You mean you're, you're not even mad at him? You're not going to take justice in your own hands, Miss Cooper? No, I just want him released. I've decided that he shouldn't be penalized for standing up for his own convictions. Is that what you're standing up for today, Miss Cooper? <laughs> well, you may be anti-American, Miss Cooper, but you're a darn good sport. A uh, hollow. Uh, bring in the old right-hander. Miss Cooper, what's, what's behind all this? That old right hand. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr. Blake did me a great service. That spanking really opened my eyes. Say, you're being very broad-minded about this. Oh, I think you're giving me more credit than I deserve. Oh, I see. Now I walk the plank, huh? Right into some hot soup. You got her all wrong, buddy. You're a free man. She's dropped the charges. Step aside, boys. Why? Because I know now that what you did to me last night should have been done a long time ago. I'm sorry you had to spend the night in jail. Say, Miss Cooper, does this mean you're giving up communism? It's rather obvious, isn't it? Say, is this a romance? Did he light that old spark? My car's waiting outside. I'll be glad to take you any place you want to go. No, thanks. But I did want to talk to you. Okay. Hold it for one picture. Hold it a minute. Oh, please, what is this? Can we call it love at first slap? Oh, now, please, boys. Don't go jumping to conclusions. What a touch that guy must have. I suppose you're wondering why I got you out of jail. Naturally. Well, when I thought it over last night, after all the confusion, I, I realized I'd put you in a very unfair position. You must have thought me awfully opinionated. I thought you, uh, shall we say, uh, hard-headed? I think you're being terribly nice. I uh, hope those reporters won't cause you any more trouble. They seem to be taking a lot for granted. Huh. I don't see how they can do anything else with you throwing all those cheap cues around the place. Cheap cues? Listen, lady, what do you want? The flirtation has laid an egg. Flirtation? Do you think I'd stoop to a flirtation with a moth-eaten $18 a week waiter like you? Yes. Besides, I'm an out-of-work waiter. You had me fired last night, remember? Well, you should have been fired a long time ago, you incompetent olive chaser. Oh, I don't know. I thought I did rather well, considering I'd never done it before. You remember what I was saying last night about America being the only country left in the world where there was always an opportunity? Well, where else could this happen? Five minutes ago, I was in jail. Now? Here I am, stretched out in the back seat of a Rolls-Royce sedan, smoking a 50-cent cigar, with the richest girl in the country throwing herself at me. I detest you. I would have loved to have let you rot in jail. The only reason I pulled you out of there is because you're getting all the good publicity, and I need some of it. Oh, cards on the table, huh? Now, that I like. But I don't quite understand it. Bad publicity is no novelty to you. Frankly, it's hurting the sale of Cooper's soup. Oh, yes. I hear anybody caught with a can of it is shot at sunrise. But uh, why should a freshly hatched little communist like you worry about the profits of a big, soulless corporation like Cooper's soup? My motives needn't concern you. I have to get people to change their opinion of me, and the quickest way to do it is to be seen with you. Oh, so that's it, huh? Mm -hmm. Trying to trump up a romance. Well, I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you a thousand dollars. Oh, you must be out of your mind. Now, don't get the wrong idea. It's worth it to me. It's purely a business proposition. Oh, I didn't get the wrong idea. It's the price that I'm objecting to. Do you think I'd be seen holding hands with you for a thousand dollars? Two thousand. You don't seem to realize what hard work it would be to take you out. Oh, let's drop it. How much do you want? Look, lady, it isn't that I object to working as a gigolo. That doesn't bother me. But it's too temporary. I'm looking for something permanent. Today, I have name appeal. Tomorrow, it may be gone. Say, does this cigar bother you? Yes. Does me, too. Now, to get back to our transaction, how about a good, steady, on-the-level job? You're hired. What do I do? 
prove anything. You can be a soup taster if you want to. Oh, no, no, that won't do. I'm serious about this. This is the break that I've been waiting for, and I'm not going to sell myself short. What do you want to be, vice president? That's it. Wonderful. Imagine it at my age, vice president of one of the largest soup companies in the whole world. Ho, ho, what a success story. Say, you people don't make these things too, do you? No. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. You rumble like a truck driver. <laughs> There's nothing strange about that. I drove a truck while I was working my way through college. You must have broken down in your freshman year. Oh, no, not at all. I rode right up to the graduation exercises on it. You know, I guess I've had more jobs than anybody in the world. I've done everything from walk dogs to manage a hotel. You were uniformly unsuccessful, I see. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. As a hotel manager, I was a wow. Big resort hotel upstate. 600 rooms, beautiful view of the lake, golfing, swimming, boating, tennis, bridge whist on Sunday nights. Oh, yeah, I was really hot stuff. We had the best $3 dinner in the East. Then why aren't you still managing it? Well, we made a horrible discovery. The dinner was costing us $3.10. <laughs> This makes the sixth time this week that a young man somewhere in America has spanked his sweetheart. The romance between Penny Cooper and Alan Blake is having repercussions from coast to coast. Jim, hello. Where have you been this time? Yeah, I've been doing a little shooting up in Canada. Did you get anything? Yeah, two elk and a guide. <laughs> Don't forget that little Indian girl. Oh, you mean Princess Sit Tight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, got the report on sale. I certainly did, Miss Earnshaw. Splendid. Most gratifying. Most gratifying. Yeah, take care of that, will you, dear? <laughs> yes? You yeah, well, well, have her come in. Have her come in. Send her in, please. You might, yes, by all means. Well, Milvin. Well, Elsa, my, my, you know I feel like kissing you. What's stopping you? I don't know. <laughs> Give me the other cheek. <laughs> You're wonderful. Of course I am. Well, come over and sit down. Tell me all about it, will you? <clears throat> have you seen this? this? Great, Elsa, great. I'll never be able to thank you enough. I, will you have a cigar? Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> Wait till you hear my new idea. New one? I'm going to give an Americana party in honor of Penny and Alan on Penny's birthday. Everyone's going to come dressed as their favorite character in American history. Wonderful, Elsa. No one can doubt Penny after that. As Penny's birthday is on Sunday, I'm giving the party tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. At midnight, everyone can blow whistles and eat birthday cake. Oh, that's marvelous, Elsa. Marvelous. Yeah, well, come in. Oh, Mr. Cooper. Will you okay these sketches on the new campaign? Yeah, excuse me, Elsa. Yeah, what campaign? Well, the advertising of the new soup. Côte d'Azur Clam Bisque. Clam what? Well, it's really the same clam chowder you turned down last month. Well, then what are you putting it out for? What's the meaning of this? Well, Mr. Blake can't manage your, your, your order, sir. Mr. Blake? Who's he? You remember Penny's friend. Well, we'll see about this. Hold those sketches, will you? Excuse me, Elsa. Friday night, that's it. That last bit of chives did the trick. Monsieur Blake, je vous assure la soupe, c'est mon âme, c'est mon cœur. Je suis un artiste avec la... Well, look here, Mr. Blake. What do you mean by okaying a soup I rejected? Well, because you're wrong. This is a sensational soup. It's aristocratic. Monsieur a raison, monsieur a raison, monsieur a raison. All right, all right, all right. That's why it's no good. You can't sell that soup. People want a soup that'll stick to their ribs with body to it and with enough flavoring so they know what kind they're drinking. But, monsieur, je vous assure que la soupe, c'est mon âme, c'est mon cœur. Je suis un artiste. Oh, mon oh, mon oh, Merci. Now, look here. People are not interested in buying something that everybody can have. They like to think they're getting something special. They like to imagine they're drinking the same soup enjoyed by the upper crust. That's why Cote du Jour clam bisque is good. It has snob appeal. Uh, what do you mean, snob appeal? Monsieur Rizzo, Monsieur Rizzo, Monsieur Rizzo, Monsieur Rizzo will you please be cool? You shut up a minute. Uh, merci. Now look here, Mr. Blake. It's all very well for you to have your name on the door and call yourself vice president. But I want it strictly understood that you're to do no work and give no orders. And please remember that I'm still president of this firm. 
Monsieur le Président. Yes, that's just what I said. Now, all right, you can go to front now. Go ahead, go on. Oh, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président. What are you doing? I am resigning as of right now. You can tell Penny goodbye for me. Huh? Now, wait a minute now. Now, don't, don't get your stomach in an uproar. There's no need to be hasty. Now, look here, Mr. Cooper. As long as my name is on that door as vice president, I'm going to be a vice president, an executive vice president, and I'm going to work. And any time you think I'm going to be a figurehead around here, you can get out your eraser. Yeah, now, wait a minute now. Don't get excited. I was just trying to make things easy for you, that's all. I, of course, if you'd rather work, why, we'll find things for you to do. Now, now, you take off your hat and keep your shirt on and sit down at that desk. Um, uh, does, uh, coat does your clan bisque go on the market? Well, I, I, it goes on the market, yes. Okay. Does it go on my way? You can swim in it if you want to. Now we're getting someplace. If you'll excuse me, I'll go on where I left off with my work. Hello, Frontenac. The taste is perfect. But see what you can do with the bouquet. Oh, the shit. Attende, Frontenac. Fet Kelka shows avec le bouquet. Le bouquet. We're going ahead with that clam bisque. It'll cut down our excess profits tax. Hello, Penny. It's good to see you, Bruce. How goes the campaign? My manager seems pleased. We oh. broke all attendance records in Poughkeepsie. But then, of course, we were serving cider and donuts. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, how can I be enthusiastic when every time I pick up a newspaper, it's full of nothing but you and that waiter? I had to come back to see what it was all about. Don't be concerned about him. My only feeling for Mr. Blake is a yearning to wrap a crowbar around his ear. Say, you don't mean you're doing all this just for me. Penny, you're a sweetheart. Well, Bruce, I, I might have known you wouldn't let me down. I was well, too really? stupid to realize that you're doing all this just to keep from hurting my campaign. Well, this is a fine thing. Here I stand all day over a pot of hot soup and come home and find this. Just a minute. Now look, Fairchild, I've been anxious to see you. I just wanted you to know that there was nothing personal in that punch on the chin the other night. I considered it rather familiar on such short acquaintance. I'm sorry that it had to happen when it did. I was getting interested in the discussion. You know, you and I see eye to eye on a lot of things. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to vote for you. You are? Sure, if you have any campaign literature, let me have some, and I'll be glad to pass it out among my friends. Thanks, I'll see that you get it. How do you two stand on the tariff? Oh, I'm sorry, Apple Cake. We shouldn't be talking shop. Where were you at one o'clock? We were to have lunch together, you know. I had the best of intentions, but I got all wound up in some clam bisque. Now you two are talking shop. I must be running along, Penny. I wish you didn't have to, darling. I have to make three after-dinner speeches tonight, and I want to grab a bite to eat first. Goodbye, sweet. Oh. Goodbye, Blake. Goodbye, Fairchild. Well, now that the Republican rally is over, maybe we can decide whether to go to the horse show or the Beaux-Arts Ball. We're not going anywhere. What? Get Bruce to take you out. But that's impossible. There'll be photographers around. I can't be out with another man. Then stay home. Look, young lady, I'm getting tired of making public passes at you while a lot of morons sit around and drool at us. I want a night off. This is rather sudden, isn't it? You may not realize it, but I had a personal life before I met you. On Saturday night, I used to take a girl out, we'd have a swell time. But this isn't Saturday night. Well, once I'm out, I wouldn't know the difference. But you couldn't be seen with another girl. Don't worry, where we'd go, we wouldn't be seen. I'm going with you. All right, but you won't like it. That's what they told me the first time I tried bird's nest soup. Now we manufacture it. You thought I wouldn't like this. I love it. Oh, I see you have a common streak I didn't know about. I even like dancing with you. After that first experience, I didn't think I'd ever try it again. Well, that was a rumba. I'm strictly an American dancer. 
I'm glad you brought me here. It's a relief not to have fingers and cameras pointing at us. Oh, don't worry. Nobody recognizes us in this crowd. Especially with these dark glasses. I'm going to wear them the rest of my life. I'm through being Penny Cooper. From now on, I'm going to be Maisie Dokes. Oh, that's funny. Most of the Maisies I know spend their life dreaming about being as rich and as glamorous as Penny Cooper. <laughs> I hope I'm not cramping your style. Oh, of course not. You're a natural-born alligator. <laughs> I think I'm more of a rug cutter. Do you always come here with your Saturday girls? Sometimes. Where else do you go? Grant's tomb. Grant's tomb? What do you do up there? Well, we talk about the Civil War. Maybe not, but we're gonna try. How do you like that, sailor? Are you kidding? Come on, babe. for 16 days and I never even found out what her last name was. The only reason I entered the marathon in the first place was because I was out of work and they serve coffee and sandwiches every three hours. When we get our routine perfected, maybe we ought to enter a contest. Sure, we'd be a cinch. You had a good time, didn't you? Wonderful. Even if the Navy did torpedo us. Oh, well, we must try it again sometime on one of our nights off. Next time, we ought to go to Grant's tomb. Say, what's wrong with going up there now? Oh, no, I it's too late now. You know, Penny, I'm beginning to understand you. You're all mixed up inside. I feel perfectly normal, Doctor. Well, that's just the trouble, you see. You don't know what it means to be normal. Ever since you were born, you've been surrounded by false values. Why, you've never even had your big toe on the ground. I had more than that on the ground back there at that dance hall. <laughs> oh, yeah. It seems silly to say this to a girl as rich as you are, but you've never had a chance. And as soon as you sensed that you'd missed something, you started to grow. But you didn't know what you were looking for, so you grabbed onto the wrong things. You mean I had no mother to guide me? Well, something like that. Please, now. We've had our first halfway enjoyable evening together. Don't spoil it. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I was right about you in the first place. The physical approach is the only one that gets results. That's the truck driver in you. Here, here. I can't have you going away mad. After all, I'm only an employee. Well, you're through for the evening. You needn't try to run up any overtime. Oh, I beg your pardon, but you were ringing the bell. You see? I told you the physical approach was the only one you'd understand. You're... You're fired! Good night, Angel Cake. Uh, where's Miss Penny, Eric? 
She's in a shower. Oh, well, then I guess you'd better speak to her, Elsa. If you go in there, I advise you to wear headgear. She'd never dare hit a woman. between you and Alan. I've endured that smirking face of his as long as I can. The next time I see it, I'm going to jab him silly. Sounds like love to me. Love? I'd like to see him barbecued over a slow fire. I hate him. I refuse to discuss him or see him or talk about him or with him or have anything to do with him. Blame you for trying to end it all. If I could get up on that thing, I'd jump off too. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose Penny's plenty angry, huh? Angry? She had the cold water on, but the bathroom was steaming. Oh, uh, Elsa, we're sunk. We're sunk. She's walked out on Alan, and now if she walks out on her party, the papers will probably say she's a communist again, and we'd be right back where we started. I, I, I... Let's get drunk. I never drink. You've never been on a spot like this either. You're right about that. The first time I've ever had a party blow up in my face, and people get twice as mad when they've rented costumes. I tell you, it's enough to give a man the jumps. Okay, wait a minute. Wait. Uh, is that phone for me, Grisha? No, it's from a scooper. Hello, hello, hello. One, two, three, testing. Oh, there you are. Just hold on. I have someone on the wire. It's Mr. Blake. Will you talk? Oh, Penny, please do, huh? You bet I'll talk to him. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Now, don't be rough with him. Just handle him gently with kid gloves, you know. Well, what do you want? I, uh, I just wanted to say goodbye. I've taken a new job, and I'm leaving. Leaving? But, Alan, where are you going? I've got a job on a freighter. I'm going to South America. As a matter of fact, I'm on the pier now. Well, there goes the ship's whistle, so I guess it's just goodbye, Penny. But, Alan, wait a minute. Do you think you should? Well, what else can I do? After all, you know, being a vice president one day and just a nobody the next is pretty hard to take. But, Alan, I... No matter what he says, don't let him go. South America, at, at this time of year, well, I don't know, Alan. Oh, I'll be there for all the seasons. I've shipped for three years. Three years? Oh, Alan, you can't do it. I can't let you go away for three years. But, Pumpkin, you don't think I want to go. Oh, I didn't know you were still home, Mr. Blake. Oh, that's all right. I'll come in and clean up after him. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. I'll come aboard right away. Well, I guess it's now or never. Of course, if I thought you really needed me, I'd grab my duffel bag and jump off this ship in a second. Yes. I need you, Alan. Angel face! In a personal or in a business way? Both, Alan. Yes. You get your job back. Wonderful! In about three seconds, there's gonna be a one-man mutiny on this ship. Where will I meet you, cutie pants? At my party. Tonight. Yes. All right, darling. Goodbye. Cutie pants. I'll show him. He'll find out how much I need him. But you're going to the party with him, aren't you? I wouldn't miss it. At midnight, I'm going to wipe that smirk off his face with a chandelier. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
good evening. How are you, Vincent? Just make yourself... Hello, Cecilia. Virginia, you look marvelous. You look wonderful. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. <laughs> Who are you supposed to be? I don't know, but it's something to do with the revolution. <laughs> Take my breath away. And just to think, instead of standing here gazing at someone as lovely as you are, I might have been looking into the face of that bearded first mate. Who can tell? In time, you might have grown very fond of Oh, I don't think so. Oh, incidentally, I brought you a little gift for your birthday. Oh, how thoughtful, Alan. I was going to send it to you from the ship, but the way things turned out, I could bring it myself. Oh, it's beautiful. What are they? Barnacles? Barnacles? Why, those are seagoing nautilus and things. It should go very well with this Pocahontas costume, don't you think? Yeah, I think it'll look great. Incidentally, what do you think of me as Honest Dave? Very unique. You'll be the sensation of the party. Hmm. What this country needs is another Lincoln. I'd hate to see anyone come in here dressed as John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> I'm glad you could be here, Blake. Oh, wild horses couldn't have kept me away. Young Mr. Lincoln doesn't know it, but he's about to be emancipated. <laughs> you know, darling, we had a very narrow escape. Just think, if you hadn't finally broken down, I might be sailing away right now in the black hole of that ship. You'd be out on your balcony looking out to sea, crying your eyes out. Instead, here you are snuggled in my arms. If you snuggle me any closer, you'll break my back. I beg your pardon, sir. This is a respectable joint. Uh, it's a house rule. There has to be the width of a cellophane napkin between couples. I'm awfully glad you could make it, Bruce. <laughs> I dropped three planks from my platform at Troy and saved an hour and a half. <laughs> how are you, Blake? At my apex, say, tell me, how in the world did you ever think of that costume? Oh, ideas like this just come to me out of the blue. Say, as one rail splitter to another, how about splitting this dance with me? Oh, now, wait a minute, Abe. Eh? That's asking quite a lot. <laughs> well, in order to avoid the Battle of Gettysburg, I'll finish it with you, Bruce. <laughs> well, all right. But keep off that terrace. Uh, what will you have, sir? Scotch highball. I make a dandy, Sherry Cliff. Oh, you do? I certainly do. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Don't put too much soda with that scotch. <clears throat> scotch. Nicely done. I couldn't take my eyes off you. Thanks, Blake. They would have to play one of those things and me with my knee action. Hey, do you have to play that now? Then do you mind, Alan? Bruce's knee action is perfect. Well, all right. But the next dance is mine. You rumble beautifully, Melvin. I once spent a weekend in Havana. Well, uh, where's my drink? I threw it away. The Board of Health won't let you pour them back. Well, they'll let you pour them out, won't they? Yes, indeed. That's what I'm here for. <clears throat> Sherry Cliff? No, scotch and soda. How do you like that? 30 solid minutes of rumble. I think they must be making it up as they go along. <laughs> you know, I've been watching you. I think I've got you all figured out. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't rumble, and your girl is dancing with somebody who does. Now, that's a remarkable deduction. <laughs> I suppose you can tell me how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. You're a little singed. You're wonderful. Now I wish you'd tell me what I'm going to do about it. You slip him, Mickey. 
it never fails. <clears throat> a friend of mine makes them. And they're very neat, too. The victim doesn't get sick, he just ceases to function. I've knocked out some of the best people in cafe society. You have? Mm. You know, I may have a customer for you in a few minutes. You mean the Abe Lincoln that's dancing with Miss Cooper? My friends, you are sensational. <laughs> you know, we started out rather rough, you and me, but <laughs> now I rather like you, too. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Hurry back with your friend. I just love to watch him get it. <laughs> Say, uh, you two must be to the boiling point by now. How about having a drink? No, thanks, Alan. I've been enjoying this too much to stop. Later, old man. Uh, let me try that. I think I've got the hang of it. I've been watching you two very closely. Oh, I see my little Nautilus have spawned, huh? Bruce gave it to me for my birthday. Well, wasn't that thoughtful of him? In later life, if we get hard up, we can hock him. This is ridiculous. Don't you think we'd better sit this one out? Oh, I should say not. I've been waiting too long for this. There's nothing wrong with my foxtrot. Come on. Say, later, how about giving those gourds of yours a rest for a while? It's up to Miss Cooper. She asked us to play rumbus for an hour. How about it, honey? Go ahead and play a foxtrot, Slam. Let's change to number seven, boys. As long as you like the rumba so well, maybe I better take some lessons. Don't bother. Unless you learn how to rumba in the next 20 minutes, it'll be too late. Because at midnight, we're through. You mean that what you said on the telephone this afternoon was strictly phony? Just as phony as that steamship whistle of yours. Oh, well, I admit that that was a trick. But I only did it because I knew that you really didn't want to fire me. No? Well, tomorrow morning you can start watching the want heads for a new job. I'd like to follow you, but I don't. Well, look, I was saving this for our 12 o'clock dance. But I'll tell you now, the only reason I ever needed you was to keep the soup company alive until I was old enough to sell it. You've been very superior. Laughing at my ideals, ridiculing them. Well, maybe you'll take me seriously when you find out I'm going to give every cent I make from the sale of the company to the Communist Party. As vice president of the company, I must say I hardly agree. Uh, have you got a buyer? Do you see that man standing over there with Milburn? <laughs> at five minutes after midnight, Mr. Stack is going to give me a check fresh. Well, I've certainly got to give you credit. You lay a beautiful smoke screen. Here I was giving you all sorts of fatherly advice, thinking that you were mixed up and you knew exactly where you were sailing every minute. <laughs> well, my only regret is in the last few weeks I've learned to like cigars. What pleases me most about the whole thing is that now you'll be back waiting on tables where you belong. Uh, just a minute. That bracelet. That means business, huh? You're going to marry Bruce? Yes. Well, anyway, you picked yourself a Republican. Let's go find him. We'll have a drink on this. Well, Bruce, old boy, could you use that drink now? I've been waiting with my tongue hanging out. Well, what do you have? I'll have an old-fashioned. Take mine to say. Make three. Yes. You know, I've got a great idea. The three of us hit it off so well, I suggest that every year we get together on Penny's birthday and have a drink. What about it? I, I could just see us 50 years hence, lined up at some modernistic bar, our plates clicking, ordering old-fashioned. Oh, by that time, Bruce, you'll be in Washington. We'll be getting high on government liquor, rolling down the White House lawn like Easter eggs. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Cooper? Mr. Link? Um, hey, are, Bruce. Penny, my dear? What's a waiter? Always a waiter. Oh, yes, isn't it terrible? I have to watch myself like a hawk. You know, it gets very embarrassing at times. I find myself picking up tips in restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, here's to our reunion next year. And here's to the reunion the year after that. <laughs> if we go through this year by year, we'll never make the first reunion. Uh, uh, that's right. We'd better drink to the first one while we're at it, don't you think? Here's to it. Uh, 
any. Uh, don't forget, this is our dance. You'll excuse us, won't you, Bruce? Hurry back. Remember, we have 49 more years to go yet. Better watch out, Penny. In a few minutes, it's your birthday. He'll be spanking you again. Confidentially, she can hardly wait. No matter what she says, she's crazy about him. Look, she's practically swooning in his arms. Very nice old-fashioned. Madame? Oh, I certainly did. Come in. Uh, do you bite, madame? Where am I? <laughs> Sugar Ridge Hotel, Sugar. 600 rooms. Beautiful view of the lake, swimming, golfing, boating, and tennis. You remember, this was the scene of my former triumph as manager. You mean we're all alone in this place? Well, I'm a little sensitive on the subject, but as a matter of fact, we are. Even the stockholders don't come here anymore. However, it was the only place I could think of to bring you last night after I slipped to that Mickey. You low worm. You dirty worm. Oh, now, now, don't take it too hard. After all, I did as much for your sake as for mine. How do you figure that? Well, you were going to sell the company and give the money away. I couldn't let you do that. And what concern is it of yours whether I sell it or not? Well, I'm going to marry you. You wouldn't want to come to me penniless. Well, come on, come on, let's eat. I'm hungry as a bear. Do you expect me to eat chained up like a dog? Oh. No, of course not. I forgot about that. This was just a little safety device while I was busy in the kitchen. Of course, you realize that I can run faster than you can, don't you? Well, come on, come on, pet. Sit down, sit down. What do you have? Peaches, pears, or pineapple? There's peaches. How long do you expect to keep me here? Well, we got canned goods enough to last for about six months. Of course, if you're still stubborn, we can always send out for more canned goods. I suppose you realize what the penalty is in this state for kidnapping. Mm-hmm. And I think it's worth it. You know, I would gladly die to spend a few days of bliss with you. Well, come on, come on, apple cake. Eat. You gotta eat, you know. You gotta keep up your strength. If it takes me the rest of my life, I'll pay you back for this. Oh, come on. Now, why do you upset yourself? You shouldn't lose your temper before breakfast. Now, if you just relax, we could have a very nice life here together. Just imagine, in the summertime, I could fish and you could gather berries. In the wintertime, we'd have a trap line. Well, I can see myself now coming home through the snow in the evening. And there you'd be at the windowsill taking care of the geraniums. And supper'd be on the table, steaming hot. Say, it'd be great. And who knows, maybe in a few years, there'd be a couple of little golden-headed tots running around the place. Well, at least it won't be so lonesome around here. Wonderful! Now you're beginning to talk like the real Maisie Dokes again. Oh. Never mind. Never mind. You know, Penny, it's a shame we can't stop snapping at each other. Between battles, we get along beautifully. You know, it's as though we're both were afraid to admit something that we know is true. What do you mean, Alan? 
Well, now, Penny, you certainly know why I brought you here. Why? Because I'm in love with you. And I'm not going to let you do anything foolish. Never mind. I seem to be a little nervous. Penny, you love me, don't you? Well, I, I think I'll go home now. Go home? What are you talking about? You can tend your own geraniums. I'm leaving. Now, just a minute, Cooper. None of your tricks. I hate to run on a full stomach, but I can if I have to. All right, start running. Hey, come back here! <laughs> There's a butter knife on the table. You might try cutting your leg off. Goodbye, cheesecake. Congress should be filled with honest men. Don't you think it's time we elected honest men for important jobs? Men whose main ideals are against communism? <laughs> it's time we recognize the seriousness of the crisis that's confronting us. I am absolutely convinced. the same inquisitive, but where were you and Penny last night? Oh, let's skip that. Keep your mind on the driving. After all, I am engaged to her. Well, that may be, but she's marrying me. Well, why is she running away from you? Oh, I don't know. Just being coy, I guess. You know how girls are. They like to be chased. You know, I'm getting to the point where I don't like you. No? No. I may have to punch you on the nose. Well, when you make up your mind, let me know. Where was she last night? I don't know. She must have gone through a terrific emotional crisis. She came home an hour ago and telephoned her lawyers. And that's when I sent for you to come and help me again. You've whistled for me so often, I'm beginning to feel like a St. Bernard. Well, I'm sorry, Elsa. I... Oh, there you are, Penny. Penny. Penny, dear, you... Penny, you can't be serious about selling this company. I'm not going to argue, Uncle. My mind's made up. You can't do a thing like this on the spur of the moment. You haven't anything to worry about, Uncle. One-fifth of the stock is being set aside in your name. The rest goes to the party. And that's what's so horrible about it. If your father were alive, it would kill him. To think that all of his money is going to a bunch of reds. Why, there never was a less liberal man in the whole world. Yes? Uh, Mr. Stackett and his lawyers are downstairs. Mr. Stackett. Hugh Stackett, of all people, doing this to me. Oh, kill Desillusionement. Kill Desillusionement. Come on, madame, my heart is brimming. I know. So is mine. With so much money, it thrills me to think how much we will accomplish. Yes, Grisha, it thrills me too. I am ecstatic. As ecstatic as one can be at my age. I will go down and get everything in readiness. It's still not too late, Penny. Do we have to go through that all over again, Elsa? You're not selling that company because you believe in communism. You're doing it because you're in love with Alan. I loathe him. Oh, no, you don't. But you're too stubborn to admit it. So you're just going ahead, selling the company and hurting everybody just to strike back at him. Save that for one of your lectures, Elsa. Oh, Milburn. Oh, Milburn, I have nothing to say to you, Stackett. Well, I don't see why this should interfere with our friendship. This is just business. To think that all these years I've been going camping with a snake in the grass. Oh, Millie. Let's get this over with, Mr. Stackett. Maybe you can help me, Elsa. From now on, you're on my blacklist, you dirty dog. Oh, Elsa, now... Don't speak to me. I've checked everything, Miss Cooper. All you have to do is sign. It's an ironclad document, Miss Cooper. Here's the pen, Miss Cooper. Uh, Comrade Madame, I thought you would like to sign this in red ink. This will do all right. <laughs> Russia has invaded Finland. 
But what's it got to do with you? I'm a friend. And y'all are Russian. Hey, where are you going? Take it easy. Take it easy. Hold, it. Hold, it. Hold my hand. I'll knock his brains out. Give me a... Grisha, what does this mean? How can they do this? What about the non-aggression pact? It may be a typographical error. What do you think of their fine ideals now, Penny? So this is the Brotherhood of Man I've been reading about. They believe in peace, do they? Picking on a country 50 times smaller than they are. Do you think I'd give my money to a cause like that? I'll show you what I think of that cause. And that's not all. He's not even a good communist, a dirty crook. Half my salary I've been paying him every week just so I could keep my job. And so is everybody else. Grisha. The man has to live. You thought you were paying for leaflet camp payments, Cooper. But all the while, he was buying a fur coat for a dame in Brooklyn. Let me out of my luck as rest of teeth out. It's my privilege. I paid for it. Give me 60 days, I'll pay you back every cent. Not that way. Don't lead with your right. Now control yourself. Think of what you're doing on these Stop. Oh. My protege. No use of counting. He's out like a light. Penny! Bruce, what happened to Penny, you? Penny, what's going on? This journey's getting to look like a joint. Well, I have no alternative but to leave. Well, neither have we, gentlemen. Come on. Well, Penny, I knew when it came to a showdown you wouldn't go through with it. Don't take any bows. Your manly charms had nothing to do with it. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Penny. He's been telling me how much you love him. Love him? I despise him. Uh, uh, here, Bruce, you're a lawyer. Just look how ridiculous this thing was. Pardon me, Miss Maxwell. Now, hold on, Blake. This has gone far enough. I thought we'd settle this... Bruce. I'm afraid the revolution is over. <laughs> you see, I told you she was a cinch for the physical approach. Oh, don't get mad, Pumpkin. I'm not. I just remembered something. I'll vote for you anyway, Bruce. It wasn't your vote I was after, Penny. Oh, uh, I mean... Cheer up, Bruce. You'll get more feminine votes as a bachelor anyway. What about the future? The only two bachelors in the White House were Democrats. I shouldn't let you. You're probably just marrying me for my money. <laughs> sure I am. But it's nice you're good looking too. Cutie pants. 